What's up everybody, big news, you can now buy film for your cameras on the Moment website. Introducing the Moment Film Store. You should shoot that. It's cute. So yeah, we are selling 35 mil, 120, Super 8, and a bunch of other film goodies. What's cool is that you can actually now do all your film shopping right from our shop. Isn't that sick, Taylor? I'm so excited. Nice. So if you haven't noticed, we've been talking a lot about film lately. If you follow us on Twitter, we've been having lots of discussions there. And we've also launched quite a few film lessons, Willem, Volandis, and soon to be Joe Greer. So it's definitely kind of been in the making for a while. And we as the Moment team are so excited because a lot of us are true original film nerds. So this is just such a big day. All this crust on the edge. <laughs> this is so ugly. No worries. It's gonna taste bomb though. This is my little Olympus OM1, just a manual film camera. No film in it currently. All right, so we'll get into today's video. Basically, Taylor and I are out here at this cute town. We're gonna go walk around and shoot one roll each of 35 millimeter films on films. 35 millimeter film on our cameras and gonna give you some tips as we go so if you're a beginner or you're advanced you might learn a couple things or a lot of things but look at this light changing on us yeah it's a beautiful day so tip number one is going to be super helpful when you are choosing the film stock you're going to shoot which is of course one of the very very first steps of shooting film so kodak for example here's ektar 100 and here's Portra 160. Here's more. And here's more. What will help you when choosing your stock is the color of the box, and as you'll see, even the color on the canister, is going to kind of give you a little bit of a cheat sheet for what that film stock characteristics are. Kodak, for example, all these film stocks are pretty dang warm. So they all have orange boxes. Fujifilm, for example, has a green box, and that's because a lot of the highlights in Fuji colors are green, and Cine still is blue. So the color of your film box and on the canister is going to give you a hint at the film characteristics. Tip number two, when you're buying film, you'll notice there's different numbers. Um, for instance, this one says Portra 160, this says Portra 400. These numbers, it goes from, it goes pretty low actually, from like 50 or even lower on some of the films, but um, it kind of is your ISO or your ASA. Kids these days are calling it ISO, that's technically digital. ASA, as you can see, there's like the, on my dial here. It's basically how sensitive that film is to light. So if you're shooting in bright daylights, just pick a lower number like 100. If you're shooting in cloudy days um, or darker light, maybe pick a 400 or an 800. So just know if you're a beginner, the lower number on the film, brighter days, the higher number on the film, more moody days or night shooting or if you want even more grain. So there you go. Oh, that shutter. First shot. So tip number three is loading your film. And the tip isn't as much about loading it as it is making sure it's loaded correctly. So a lot of cameras are a little bit different, but this one, for instance, is an Olympus OM-1. It's more of a manual, full manual camera. Taylor's, we'll show in a second, is an automatic point and shoe. Still shoots 
point and shoot, mm -hmm. it still shoots 35 mil film, but it does more automatically, if that makes sense. Basically, there'll be a notch right here, and you can tell the shape of the film can fall right into there. So that means you're positioned correctly. Um, you'll take this end of the film roll, pull this out a little bit, so don't feel, don't feel worried about pulling this out. And there'll be an end part. There's probably terms for all this, but I'm not that film nerdy, I'm just your basic. But you'll notice on this small wheel here, there's these notches on the side of your 35 mil film. There's these little teeth right here. Make sure those teeth fall into the film, push your end through, wind it once, you'll have to shutter, uh, do the shutter button so it advances, and then I wind it twice. And then once you've wound it twice and you know you're in like that, you're good to go. There's probably a YouTube video for your specific camera to load your film if you've never loaded your first film camera, but for this one, just double check and make sure that the tip is make sure that it's loaded correctly because you don't want to go through your full roll, you go out and shoot, think you've loaded it right, and it was not even advancing the whole time. So double check your film roll loading. <laughs> Extra tip, if you're on an automatic camera, make sure you, on a bright day like this, choose to turn your flash off. Hot tip, hot tip. Kind of your classic film trap. Some like car, car. and some grass. <laughs> <laughs> car and grass. <laughs> Fourth tip, uh, right after your shoot, what I suggest is advancing to your next shot because if you're walking around and you see something that's happening really quick or the action and you go to take the photo and you miss it because you didn't advance your film, uh, it's kind of a personal preference thing, but I think my tip is basically, and Taylor would agree with this, if you're on a manual advancing camera, right after you take your shot, advance it so you're ready to go right away on the next one. Love that sound. Yeah, I do too. That's cool too. All right, so the next tip is if you get a point and shoot camera that comes with a long strap, so not a wrist strap, a long strap, that is the distance of your minimum focal length. So your subject needs to be at least this far away from your camera to be in focus. Dunking on them haters. <gasps> There's a freaking rig right here that I want to get a shot of, but I kind of want to get it in context of where it's around. Cause sometimes if you're too close, it's just like, oh cool, there's a rig, we get it. Uh, but if you're in context, it's like, oh, there's a rig in its natural habitat. So I'm gonna shoot that right here. I have to stop it down a bit. If you're a beginner, a very important thing to know about film. Basketball hoops are okay, train tracks are not. Even though I shot them in the well and video. <laughs> so our next tip is about how much latitude you can get on film. And basically what that means is there's really, really great dynamic range. So something that has really harsh highlights and really deep shadows might look really bad on digital. It's gonna be a lot different on film. Film can just simply handle those extremes so much better. So I'm gonna shoot this basketball hoop probably doesn't look that good from your perspective. It's backlit, there's clouds, but also sun and shadows. It's kind of a strange lighting situation, but it's gonna look cool on film. Next spot.
Can you vlog it at the same time? I'm going past that rock. Ready, set, go. Oh, I think I nailed it. No way. It might have been a little early. Should we do two? One more? Aw, oh, dude. All right. My good old Johnny Cash. You listen to Johnny Cash? Oh, yeah. All right. Convoy. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Tail your shadows in a bit. Okay. All right, one, two, three, what's up? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, Appreciate man. it, yeah. You guys have a good time. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, two, three. No, I'm not doing that. Sick. That Get was it my, on this one. That was my very last shot. Get it on this one, same thing. Same thing. But do it, do it horizontal. But okay. So it's just like us in the Kia, and maybe not the vlog cam. We got a gnarly lens flare, or like a. Sh oh well. You get what you get. You get what you get. So when you are done with your roll, we are finished on this roll. You have 36 exposures, and you don't want to go any farther. You're ready to wind it up. So every camera is a little different. Just make sure you don't wind past. But on this camera, it has a little rewind toggle right here. So you actually hold that over to the R and then you pull this up, typically where you're, you had this on the side, and then you actually start spinning. You can feel like a little bit of tension, but not too much, it's pretty light. So keep spinning, and then once you feel it go really easy, you know you're done. And there's a little click, and you can kind of hear the end of the film wind up. So it's completely done. Now, you can open it up. Bam, there it is. <gasps> Every time it's just still a little nerve wracking, but I have my 36 exposures in here, ready to get developed. Taylor in action. Okay, you're gonna be right in my shot. <laughs> I could actually get one of you though. Let me get one of you filming. Ken? <laughs> Here we come, Ken. Ken, you better you better treat our film right. Okay, whatever. Let's go All get right. the last shot. Let's get it. Make it count. You ready for this? Rewind in. So that is what it sounds like on a rewind on an auto. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, it counts it down live? Yeah. Sick. We called earlier, we're dropping a few rolls off. Trying to get it in before the hour. So we need to have them ready by 4 o'clock, huh? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm gonna give them all that bloom. All right, you guys, so we finished shooting those rolls. They're being developed right as we speak, which is very fun. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. We cannot wait to see them. Um, you've already seen them in this video. I'm but, jealous of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they saw it before we did. <laughs> yeah, but it but in the past future. Right. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Dude, dude's peeling out in a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we're just crushing some Burger Master right now, calling it a day. But that was tons of fun. Um, link below, obviously, to check out our film shop. We have tons of new products. So if you're looking to buy film, 35 Super 8 120, or some cameras, or some like disposables, or some like film related trinkets and stuff. We have great brands um, on the shop now, all around film. Um, I'll be buying my film there, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but um, as far as developing your film goes, if you're a beginner and you don't have a local lab, I like to support the local places, keep the camera shops in business with like the local spots for developing. But if you can't do that, especially right now with everything going on, where depending on where you're living, um, you can mail it in, dark room. We'll have some links below and some resources for you to check out different labs. Definitely always look at the reviews for labs to make sure that it's a reputable place. Yeah, other than that, check out the film shop. Moment is selling film now, which is super cool. Um, if you're trying to get more advanced uh, knowledge on your film shooting journey,